Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome to a very special motion graphics tutorial for the ProScore users. And uh, we're going to be sort of using this design as the inspiration. Now, this was actually created primarily in 3D, so we have a little bit more realistic lighting and reflections and things like that. But we're going to be creating a very similar, very cool 3D design only in After Effects. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have uh, sort of this 3D world and, uh, you know, these aren't actually 3D elements, but we're able to arrange them in 3D space using a very cool expression system. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new composition and we'll go ahead and use the widescreen square pixel comp at 24 frames per second. And I'll choose OK. And uh, we'll go ahead and create a new solid. And uh, we'll make this black. We'll start with our background first. OK, OK. And we'll make our colored background. So this is sort of a reddish orange color, maybe right around there. Add a quick mask. So I'll take the uh, ellipse tool here, holding down control, and then hit the letter F, and we can feather that mask. So feather it so it's nice and soft. Grab that selection tool, move it over. So we just have a nice, uh, nice background here. Now the other thing we need to do is create this element that we're going to be using. So I'm going to create a new solid and we're going to make it, I don't know, 400 by 720 and we'll make it black. So we've made just sort of a longer looking layer and we're going to go ahead and take the pen tool and we want to draw a cool looking shape sort of like these uh, vine structures in the design. So we'll just go ahead and uh, start clicking and just okay um, we can go ahead and refine this first we'll scale it down and Maybe we'll make a background layer quickly that we can use to contrast so we can actually see our little uh, vine here. And we'll go ahead and make it a little longer and probably that tall. So let's go ahead and just smooth these points out. So I'm just dragging the handles and adjusting them so they look a little bit smoother. Basically, you just want to create uh, a cool shape, something like that. Now, we're going to go ahead and add a couple of effects. So we'll choose Effect, Generate, Ramp. And this will let us colorize it. And we'll color it sort of dark red to black. And maybe not all the way black, just close to it. And we can delete that for now. So we just want to kind of give it a little bit of life, but not too much. Okay, now we want to add a bevel. So we'll choose Effect Perspective Bevel Alpha. And this gives it sort of a 3D look. And we're going to go ahead and increase it. And we'll play around with it till it looks, you know, somewhat three-dimensional. And, you know, that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing we want to do is pre-compose our graphic. So we'll take the graphic and we'll choose Layer, Pre-compose. And actually, before we do that, let's go into the Transform Settings and reset it. 
and then we'll pre-compose this layer pre-compose and we're gonna move all attributes into the new comp then when we alt double click on it we're gonna go ahead and make our comp larger and a quick way to do that go comp settings and again we'll do you know maybe 300 by 720 and I'll choose OK and just big enough so that our graphic fits inside and then I'm gonna duplicate our graphic and we're gonna make a quick highlight and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna choose effect generate fill and we're gonna fill it with sort of a white gold color and we can shut off the alpha and the ramp and then we have our mask here and that mask is around the main shape well I'm going to duplicate the mask and so now there's two masks and the second mask I'm going to subtract so the first mask adds the shape and the second mask subtracts it so if we take the second mask and we offset it you can see we create just a slight little edge and then if we move the whole mask the first mask over or even rotate it let's see if we turn our mask back on we can double click on it and maybe even rotate it very slightly and you can see we've created a very nice like highlight effect and then maybe even uh, bring the expansion in to maybe one let's zoom in here I should say negative negative one and let's see let's go ahead and play with some of these settings so the idea is just to get a cool looking uh, you know highlight maybe I'll rotate the layer all, all by itself So that looks pretty good and you know we just want something that looks organic but has a bit of 3D to it. Um, now we can go and close that and then we'll take the element and we'll scale it down and then we'll take the pan behind tool and uh, you know this seems all technical but I just want to make sure I include all the steps. Um, it's going to be actually pretty fun. So with that pan behind tool I'm going to move the center point down to the bottom and it kinda looks like a hair and if I take the rotation tool I can rotate around that point so this is like the basic setup and once we have the element together then that's when we can start doing some cool things now we're gonna turn it into a 3D layer so we'll toggle the switches and turn on the 3D layer switch and now I can move the layer in 3D space but we're going to actually create a very cool expression that's going to allow us to distribute it in a very organized yet random manner. So let's go ahead and create a new camera. And 24 millimeter, OK. All right. And then we'll go ahead and take our design and build our expression system. So we'll create an adjustment layer and we'll call it controller then we'll choose effect expression control slider control and let me just show you what this is going to allow us to do so real quick I'll just turn on some draft um, 3d so that this renders just a bit quicker is I have a whole bunch of those lines all stacked on top of each other now if I wanted to like move them all around individually I could do that but it would kinda of be a lot of work so I've set up a controller that allows you to randomly offset them and basically distribute them in 3D space so if you see here I'm offsetting them in X space and they're sort of spreading out slowly and that is the very cool expression system we're gonna be building right now and it works similar to a particle system where you can stretch you know things in an X Y and Z manner so first on the slider control we're gonna call this X 
and we'll duplicate it and we'll call this Y and we'll duplicate it and we'll call this Z. By the way, uh, duplicate control D. On to the graphic comp. I'm gonna bring up the position and I'm also gonna bring up the effects for the controller so I can link to them. And what I wanna do is alt click on the position. And here is the expression we're gonna write. We're gonna write X equals wiggle, sorry, wiggle zero comma this value. And remember wiggle, we could just type zero comma 50 and the wiggle would randomly um, you know, change the value zero times per second and change it by an offset of 50 or you know, within 50. Now, instead of using an exact number, we're gonna use the slider control from here. So we'll delete the 50 and we'll link to the X value. Now, we are working with an array. So bottom line is we need to make a value for X, Y, and Z. So there's three values that are referred to as 0, 1, 2. So the way we do that is we put a bracket after this and type 0. And that basically says wiggle this much and use only the first X value. And we'll move on and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll type Y equals wiggle zero comma our Y slider. And we do a parentheses to close it. We'll do another bracket and the number one and a close bracket and semicolon just to close that line out. Then we'll do Z equals wiggle zero comma that value close it bracket two bracket parentheses so that's our three variables and then we simply do a bracket x comma y comma z and a bracket so these are actually dynamic variables that are going to be based on these and the x y z basically says okay use those values. So now if I click away, um, nothing has really changed because our values are exactly the same. Now, I also want to add a little bit of a random rotation. So I'll duplicate the Z and we'll call this rotate random. Um, and then uh, we'll go into the rotation for our graphic. So we'll hit R and we'll bring that value up and we'll alt click on the orientation and we'll type wiggle zero comma that random value close it with the parentheses now we could set up a system just like this for XYZ rotation control but I think it's actually okay to have a full-on random value now if I take the random value here and I increase it you can see we get basically all sorts of random values for each of these. So 359.8, 358.2, 359.6. It's actually, you know, sort of, if I increase it, you'll see our thing up here just kind of goes wild and does some cool stuff. So random stuff is, uh, is definitely the key. Close that out, close that out. We'll go to half res uh, for the moment. So We've set up this, you know, somewhat complicated system, but now here's where we have the real control. I can now duplicate this, you know, once, twice, three, four, five, six, control D, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, for starters. Then I go to the controller and I can just offset the X value. Check it out. Maybe offset the Y value. Maybe the Z value. Whoa. Things will come and hit you right in the face. So you've seen this before with particle systems, but now we have that control over layers right in our comp. And I can just continue to duplicate them and it'll sort of fill in that area. Now I can go into the rotation, add a little rotation there and make things look even more wild. Now, another thing I did in my original example 
was I took the layer and add a turbulent displace. So I'll show you what that does. I can actually go and delete all the copies and go back to our original and choose Effect Distort. Let's see, Distort. What is it? Turbulent Displace, which may be right off the screen. And what I did is I just offset the turbulent displace. So see, just by moving this, it kind of you know gives it a wild wiggle. Well, I'll just go ahead, alt click on it, type wiggle, parentheses zero, comma, you know, a hundred. Now, the great thing about the wiggle zero is that these values are static. If there was any other value here, it's actually going to sort of dance. But a zero value will basically create a single random value in that range. And that's what allows you to, you know, offset these layers with such control. Now, if I duplicate them, they're going to all have different sort of uh, turbulent displacement. So if I kind of click through, you can see the offset value is different just based on the randomness of the order of the layers. So this is our basic uh, setup. So we'll go ahead and just kind of squeeze these back in and uh, just get them back in line. I want to... Uh, start designing with it. Now the cool thing, I uh, will point this out, is the cool thing about doing it this way as opposed to using a particle system is that say you don't like where a layer is, well you can just move it. And it still adheres to the particle system. And it'll move randomly, it just allows you to offset it. Um, and so that's something you definitely weren't able to do with the particle system once you know the particles are generated. They, uh, they go where they go. Now, one of the key elements of the design are sort of the bright orange hairs. So we'll take one of them here and we'll call this bright. And we'll just do an effect, generate, fill. And we'll fill it with, you know, a bright orangish yellow. And we'll give it a quick, fast blur. And we'll maybe even just turn off the displacement and then we'll change the transfer mode. So we'll toggle the switches, change it to add, and we'll unsolo it. And so check out that. We have that bright one right in the middle of all the other ones. And now if I duplicate that bright one, it's going to randomly, you know, mix with all of the other layers. And then if I go into the controller, actually I can just shut it off there then I can sort of spread the layers around and you know create kind of a cool look. I'm gonna go ahead and create a null object and this is gonna be our camera control. You know I like to use a null object instead of moving the camera so I'll take the camera and parent it to the camera controller and then I can just move the camera by moving the controller. I can also rotate the controller taking the rotation tool there and just kind of rotate around the z-axis and you know move this around. So going back into the controller for our layers, I'll kind of offset them a bit. Maybe duplicate some more of the standard graphic ones. Let's control D. Okay, so going back up here, and uh, we've got most of this set up. We'll go and take the controller for the camera, hit P, set a keyframe for the position, move it forward, and then maybe back the camera up just a bit. And then we move forward, and we'll move the camera forward even further. And we can, you know, we can, you know, move it through this stuff, even rotate it, you know, as we travel. We could start it. Uh, rotate it, you know, this way, and actually probably want to move in just a bit. And then to keyframe the rotation, we'll keyframe the orientation. I just hit R, Shift R, brought that up, and rotate this back around this way. Maybe even just shift uh, some of the position here.
Okay, now I might even brighten up our background layer. Now another thing that we can do is use the shy effect and that just basically you turn that on there and then you click on the shy button and it just hides all the layers while you work. You can still select them and they're still there just allows you to get to other layers that are more important quickly. So we have this dark background and I want to fill it with a new color. So generate fill and maybe you know play with the color a bit you know maybe even like a maroon color be kinda cool and also we'll add an adjustment layer that we can add some you know color correction to so we'll do a glow and we'll do a tint and we'll do uh, curves so we'll set this up well first We'll give it a little bit of a tint, so just bring some of the color down, and then maybe increase the radius of the glow. And on the curves, we can maybe just add a little bit more contrast. And in the blue channel, we can increase it here to kind of give it some different tones, and then finally. We could add another tint effect to bring the saturation down just a small touch. So now we have this little animation and I can go into the camera settings, hit AA, turn on the old depth of field and maybe turn up the aperture amount and change the focus distance, um, maybe something a little closer. And so now we could sort of create a more organic look. I'll go and set our RAM preview to skip one frame. And hit U. Select our two keyframes on the cam control and hit F9. Or right click, keyframe assistant, hit easy ease. And then I'll make them a little smoother. And then I'll hit zero. Take a look. So you see we have a very cool design and the focus kind of goes in and out as we fly through it. And you could go into the controller and you know play around with the rotation, give it just a lot more wildness and you know so it's not so you know specific. Even just you know start with a layer that I mean this is just a very cool way to do stuff. You could start with a layer of the the background and maybe flip it around or rotate it and then if you make copies of that one you know call it alternate duplicate that a few times and that mixes in with the other layers and so now you have layers going one way and layers going the other way so it really looks like you have um, you know this big random pile of you know different effects so here's a perfect example of how how cool this is you see how we have that layer that comes right at the camera almost hits the camera. Well, what we can do, assuming we can find it, is, uh, let's see, lock that, is we can take that layer that's getting in the way and just move it over a little bit. And then when I have to redo my camera move, I can just slide it over. I'm completely a huge nerd. You hear how excited I got about that? I'm all, get this, guys. You won't believe it. Jeez. What have I become? What have I become? Ah. <sighs> Well, if you think that's cool, listen to this. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so just uh, playing around with the color correction again. Maybe go into the curve and just give it, you know, it's really bright. I mean, I actually like the look of this rather than the original one, which I actually, you know, spent a little bit of time, you know, like 30 minutes working on that. This one actually, you know, looks cooler to me. I might actually use it for something. Oh, by the way, uh, motion blur. We'll go ahead and... Uh, hit uh, control A, select all layers, turn on the motion blur switch and then turn it on for the comp. And this is probably gonna slow things down just a bit but you know if it uh, will make everything look that much cooler eh, why not? Nerdy or not I get excited about motion blur. That's just a fact. Now I'd be lying if I said that that didn't take uh, a little bit of time to render because it did. 
Anyway, um, I got nothing else to say. I'm really happy you guys purchased this uh, DVD. It's a great collection, and I hope you guys have some fun. My name is Andrew Kramer, videocopilot.net. You guys want to hear a, a quick little anecdote, kind of a joke? I was going to try to work it in, but it wasn't that funny, but I'll just throw it in here right now, and here's, here it goes. It's like only seen on the Pro Scores DVD, like the worst joke I could think of, and here it is. So my wife got me a workout set for uh, for my birthday, and you know I don't think she's trying to say, but you know whatever, forget that. So I'm putting it together, and you know it's it's kind of a lot of work to be honest. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm getting this workout machine so that I can get stronger. I shouldn't have to be you know that strong to put this thing together. And so it was a bit frustrating that I had to work out to get strong enough to be able to put my workout machine together. It made no sense at all which made me think about the old scissor box or the scissor packaging. If you ever bought a pair of scissors, they come in this plastic packaging, which is somewhat impossible to break apart. Now, I've heard, you know, people have referenced this concept before, but it's the same thing. You need scissors to open up the container with the scissors, and it's just crazy. So anyway, now you can uh, tell everyone that you heard a very horrible joke on the Pro Scores DVD, and uh, you know you're gonna have to buy it just to hear it. And it's so bad that it's worth buying the DVD over, right? All right, I'll see you later.